Okay, in this video, we're gonna look at a couple of examples of graphs of vector valued functions. So this first one is given by uh, cosine t, sine t, and t. So that's our vector valued function. Um, and maybe the first thing to notice here is that the x coordinate of this vector valued function and the y coordinate of this vector valued function if you take them and square them, we get cosine squared t plus sine squared t, which equals 1, which tells us that this curve lives on the surface given by x squared plus y squared equals 1. So now let's think about what this surface is. So notice there's no z coordinate in here. So that means for every z value, you have the curve x squared plus y squared plus 1. In other words, if you cut this surface at any value of z, you have x squared plus y squared equals 1. In other words, you have a circle. So what that tells us, no matter what the z value is, we're going to get a circle which is going to give us a cylinder in the end. So that's going up and then down infinitely. Okay, so we've got some sort of picture like that. So this is the graph of the surface x squared plus y squared equals 1. And now we just have to think about what the graph of this curve is. So I'm going to clean up this little observation that I made, and then what we'll do is we'll, we'll plot a couple of points. Okay, so let's uh, calculate some points that are on this graph. So notice we'll have a t value, that'll be our input, and then we'll have an output, which is an ordered pair, sorry, an ordered triple, cosine t, sine t, t. Great. So t equals 0. Maybe the next thing will be t equals pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. So why I'm choosing those is because I have trig functions, and those kind of values are easy to plug into trig functions. Okay, so let's see. If we plug 0 into this, we'll get 1 for cosine. For sine, we're going to get 0. And then, obviously, if t equals 0, then we get 0. So we're along the x-axis like that. So that's this point right here. So recall that this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, and up here, this is the z-axis. Okay, good. So now let's plug in uh, t equals pi over 2. So that's going to give us cosine is 0, sine is 1, and then t is equal to pi halves. Okay, so let's see where that is. So that's going to be out along the y-axis, but we're not exactly on the y-axis. We're up pi over 2 units. So let's see if that's 1, then pi over 2 units is maybe up here. So we're up here at this point right here. So notice this point that we started with was 1, 0, 0. Now this point right here is 0, 1, pi halves. So we're there. So this was the first point. This was the second point. So we can see that we've got a graph going like that. So let's make that a little bolder. Okay, good. So now let's see what's next. We want to plug in the point pi. So that's going to give us negative 1, comma, 0, comma, pi. Okay, so we're negative 1 along the x-axis, so that's going to be back in that direction, but then we've gone up a bit. So let's see, that goes up, maybe that is to right about there. Okay, good. So now the next point we would do is 3 halves, um, and notice that's going to give us 0, negative 1 along the y direction, and then 3 pi over 2, in other words, 3 halves pi along the z direction. So we've gone up even higher, but now we're back in the negative y-axis, so that would be like maybe up here. 
Okay, so we've gone up to that point. Okay, and then finally 2 pi, notice we're going to get 1, 0, 2 pi. Okay, good. So, okay, so as we can see here, we're swirling around this cylinder um, in the shape of a helix. So it's like we took a spring and stretched it out. So that's the kind of picture that we're getting here. Okay, good. So I'm going to clean up the board and then we're going to look at one more example. Okay, so for our next example, we're going to write the vector equation of the curve of intersection of x squared plus y squared equals 4. So that's a cylinder like we discussed before. Notice for every value z, we get a circle x squared plus y squared equals 4. So that means we've got infinitely many circles on top of each other, giving us a cylinder. And then we've got this plane x plus z equals 2. Okay, so let's get a sketch of the situation. First, we'll sketch the cylinder. Okay, so here's a picture of the cylinder going up the z-axis. So notice it goes through this point along the y-axis of 2, this point along the x-axis of 2, and then those are vertically go just going straight up, and then we've got this cylinder. So the next thing we want to notice is this plane, x plus z equals 2. So notice that's going to at least contain this point right here, x um, along the x-axis of 2, in other words, 2, 0, 0, because notice that absolutely satisfies x plus z equals 2. It's also going to contain this point up here, which is the point 0, 0, 2. Good. And then another thing we're going to notice is that it has to be parallel to the y-axis. And we know that it's parallel to the y-axis because otherwise it would intersect the y-axis. But if it intersects the y-axis, then it would contain a point of the form 0, blank, 0. But notice, never are, is that x-coordinate and z-coordinate going to add to 2. Okay, so now I'll sketch the plane uh, that contains those two points. <coughs> Okay, so there's a rough sketch of that plane. So notice it's hovering over the y-axis like this and going down through the z-axis and the x-axis. So notice that's going to intersect this cylinder in the following shape. So we're going to have an ellipse that's on the front of the cylinder in this direction and then it's going to be in the back of the cylinder for the rest. So we're going to have a, an ellipse like that. So you can think about taking a toilet paper roll and cutting it at an angle and notice you'll get an ellipse. Okay, good. So now that we have an idea of the picture, let's talk about how to find the equation here, which is actually not so bad. What we'll do is we'll first parametrize this with the following. Notice we can let x equal cosine theta and y equal sine theta, and that's going to parametrize um, this circle. Great, and now we can just plug those into this equation, and notice we'll get z equals 2 minus x, which equals 2 minus cosine theta. But look, now we've got an equation for x, y, and z, which allows us to write the equation in the, of the curve as a as a e as a function with variable theta as cosine theta, sine theta, and then 2 minus cosine theta. So those are uh, the coordinates. Okay, this is the end of the video.